I'm so happy to be with you. So three case studies. One, a woman named Karen Joyce, former business partner of mine, who in her 54 years old, <clears throat> April, got diag uh, 2009, diagnosed with stage four ovarian cancer, well advanced throughout her body uh, by the time it was diagnosed, told she would have three months to live. Another, Bill Harris, longtime friend from the early 80s, as I was building my transformational work. By the end of the 80s, Bill was beginning his work in training people in the power of meditation, binaural beats, um, how to use meditation to unlock our inner capacities, opened a business, and shortly after he opened it in the second year of his business, he had a business partner who was helped fending it. They were partnered in the second year of his business. They got sued by a third party who said that Bill, the, the technology Bill had developed was actually stolen from them and threatened to shut them down, and they wanted a million dollars. And when this lawsuit came in, Bill's, Bill's world, of course, was very shaky. His business partner said, I'm out of here. This, we, we're not going to, you know, I don't want to fight this, just the cost of defending it, even if we win. It, it's not worth it. I'm out of here. You can take the business. You can cr close the business, bankrupt it, do whatever you want. I'm out of here. And Bill was left holding this by himself with a million-dollar lawsuit. Third story, Mary Morrissey. I opened a piece of mail in 2004 and found out that began to unravel some things in my understanding about the world I was in. And the CPA that I was married to and the people that were, uh, many people influenced by his work, it had a mental uh, problem with um, bipolar disease that was undiagnosed and in manic taste of mind did a number of things that put my business at such risk, taking money, investing it in other projects and ultimately millions of dollars mixed up among 11 different businesses and when it came to light, over a million dollars, million and a half dollars taken out of the work that I had built a nonprofit, 23 years of my heart and soul in that business. And as it came out, a number of things occurred that ultimately would mean within four months, we had to close the business, declare bankruptcy. Uh, and I was left holding the debt to all the congregants. I chose to pay that back and over many, many years did. But just that moment, that moment of everything collapsing in front of you, the work you've built, a marriage you have, a home you're in, and finding out that it was all built on something that you couldn't see and didn't know, how you feel about yourself, I mean, all kinds of things. So when I bring you some skill sets for how to navigate difficult times, this is not just something I've read about in a book. It's something I have lived and breathed and trained and helped others because we all face some very difficult things at time, okay, at times. So, so I will talk about them a little bit and how they applied some of these things, the first three tools. The first one is this one. I call it dare the dark. It's a dark moment in your life when you get a diagnosis. It's a dark moment when you, your business is threatened. It's a dark moment when you find out there's been money moved and you're going to have to close your business and lose your, the life you've built. It's dark in that moment. It's just like, ah. Oh. And the first thing we do is want to push it away. The first thing we want to do is do everything we can do to make it go away. Are you waiting for that to change before you grow, before you continue? The first thing you have to do is dare the dark. Look at it square in the face. There are things that happen you can't change. It can be the diagnosis. It can be the lawsuit. It can be the business thing. It can be a, vir a virus that comes globally. There's things that we face that we personally can't change. There's something, there's actually some power move when you just look at square in the face, you dare it. You dare that dark. You look at it square in the face. You're not fighting it. You're not defending from it. You're, you're just saying, and here it is. And here it is. Here it is. Here's this moment. On the hero's journey, the hero wants to get the princess out of the castle the, or to get the, get the treasure. Uh, and there's a, there's a river to ford. There's an ocean to cross. There's a dragon to slay. There's difficulty to become the person who has the capacities that are commensurate with the treasure, the life, whatever it is that we said was the outcome of the journey that we would take from where we were to where we want to be. And there are navigation tools that we use, the first of which is look at the river you got to cross, look at the dragon you got to slay, look at the ocean you're going to cross, you've got to look at it square in the face. This is you know, the challenge. Here it is. Secondly, what are you telling yourself about that? Here's where your mindset training comes in. 
you don't get to not tell yourself something about that dragon or that river or that ocean or whatever is the, the dark forest, whatever the difficulty is between where you are and where you want to be. You got to look it square in the face. Secondly, you're going to tell yourself something about that when you look. Notice what you're noticing. Make sure that what you're telling yourself is empowering. Is empowering. You look at it and say, you know what? We're all going to get through this one way or another. And I have a power in me to help me navigate this in a way that will actually take me to a greater part of myself and my life if I navigate well. And I get to choose between navigating this in a way where I am uh, letting it be turning to being bitter, being resistant, being irritated, or I can use this as inner training. As this is a time, see, you don't build muscle set on the first two reps in the gym. It's at the end, <laughs> you know, when you've lifted and now you're, it's, there's where you're building. And it's the same thing when, they're, when the outside pressure is so great, we have an opportunity to build resources that bring homeostasis. Right now on every square inch of your skin, it's about 14 pounds of atmospheric pressure. So the average man has about 4,000 pounds of atmospheric pressure on him and about 3,000 on the average woman. But nature has created our bodies, this wonderful earth suit that we wear in such a degree that there is 14.7, it's about uh, pounds of atmospheric internal pressure pressing against that atmospheric pressure, it brings stasis, equilibrium. Meaning that when you got up this morning, you didn't think, wow, I hope I don't get laid flat today by all the pressure coming at me or I hope I don't explode by all the pressure my body's pressing out. You don't even think about it, except if the outside pressure seems more than you're used to. And when it's more than you're used to, you wanna have some internal pressure valves where you can balance that even though the circumstance hasn't changed yet. This is where you build muscle set in being able to have a circumstance without the circumstance having you. You can't change the circumstance right away, but you can change you. You can change how you relate to it and what you're telling yourself while you're going through it. So yes, this is this and this and this, and it could mean this to my business and it could mean that. And there's a power in me. I'm going to get through this. I'm going to use this moment to become more of my potential self. There's more potential in every single one of us than we're accessing. And since the time is here anyway, why not use this time this way? Either you'll get stronger or you'll get littler. Why not use this time this way? So you dare the dark and then you watch carefully, as Emerson said, Ralph Waldo, stand guard at the portal of your own mind. Everything's created twice. So look, you go to, use thoughts that actually feel, help you feel more empowered. So choose an empowering thought. I am more than that. So if I lose my business, I'll build again. The skill set I have, the awareness I have can't go anywhere. If this bad thing happens, okay, well, then I'll build again. I've done that in my life. It's it, it, not easy to hold those thoughts, but they give you ideas that you won't have if you're just in catastrophe mode. So you don't want to sugarcoat the circumstances or the facts. No, look at the facts. But you don't have to grab onto the fear. You have a choice about that. Facts are. So don't sugarcoat it, nor catastrophize it. And that happens to do with the frequency of the thoughts we're thinking, which we'll talk more about. So dare the dark, know that you are more than that. You are more than that circumstance. You, guess what? All day long, from the moment you began to notice that you were waking up, you became aware that you're having this wonderful thing called life. You didn't earn it. You can't create it. But you've been given the gift every single one day at a time of life. And nobody gets to think your thoughts but you or make your choices but you. There are influencers, but they can't control what's going on inside of you. And you will have a mindset. You don't get a, you don't get a choice about whether or not you will have a mindset. It'll either be a fixed mindset and you'll struggle through this or it'll be a growth mindset. And you use this very same time of tumultuousness and difficulty and you will become more by means of that. And the third step, determine. You have, you have a place in you where you can actually determine. You can put your hand on the wheel or the ha your hand on the rudder of your own thinking and your own di direction. 
why not determine that this, you, there are gifts in every situation and you're going to gain the gifts of this. Napoleon Hill said, every adversity has, with, has within it the seed of an equal or greater benefit. But like any adversity, any seed, it has to be found, planted, nurtured, and grown. So right now, some of the seeds are hidden. Not one of us can see all the good that can come out of this circumstance, but you can see some of it. So Bill Harris gets this lawsuit. His business partner abandons. He's Bill sitting with the lawsuit. He's got his head in his hands, and then he realizes Napoleon Hill said every adversity, not just some adversities, every adversity. That means my adversity has within it the seeds of equal and, or greater benefits. But like any seed, it has to be found so it can be planted, nurtured, and grown. So he sat down with a blank piece of paper, and he started writing what possible good could happen by means of this lawsuit. What possible good, I encourage you, as you apply the thing we're talking about today, is maybe grab your own blank piece of paper. What possible good could happen by means of this difficult time that I'm going through right now? I might become more persistent, he wrote down. Maybe, and he started thinking from all these ideas of possible goods, and he taped that piece of paper right in front of where he sat at his desk. And he began to read those a couple of times a day, and then more. And the net result of that is different ideas began, began to happen to Bill. Bill's attitude shifted, his way of approaching this, rather than victim, rather than it shaking him, he began to shape it. And you have the choice about that. It'll shake you or you shape it. And he began to shape the experience himself. And things outside him hadn't changed at all, but the things inside of him were changing. And the net result, within a few weeks, not only had the, the person who came after him completely drop the lawsuit, it just dissolved, but not the good that came from it. Bill had that for the next 25 years of his life until he passed away. So there's, we want to determine, I'm not going to go through this difficult time and not get some good out of it. I can't change it. I'm going to dare the dark. There it is. I've got resources, some of which I know, and some of which I haven't yet brought forth from me. I am more than this situation. No matter what it looks like, I'm more than that. There's a power in me that's more. I can't make my heart beat. I, I can't make life move into and through me. This is a sacred gift, every one of us, this sacred thing called life. And I'm having it in this experience right now. It's a human experience. I'm not just my human self. I'm a spiritual being having a human experience. I have resources, access points. But the first step, you know, it is what it is. I'll dare it. I'll remind myself, I'll watch from my mindset point that I have resources that are up to this. I can, this can actually be something that at the end of which I have become much more of who I'm capable of being than I am right now. And I'm going to determine that if I'm going through this anyway, I'm going to gain all the gifts I can gain. I'm going to gain all the gifts, gifts I can gain. I could gain. But you have to determine to do that. Okay. So quick story, Karen Joyce was given 90 days and she didn't have 90 days. She had two and a half years. But it wasn't just the days, it was the quality. It was what she did with those. It was navigating this and who she became in the process, luminous, luminous in the process, what she accomplished in you know, 56 years rather than you know, just that bare 54 that she had. You know, it doesn't matter how much time we, it does matter to all of us how much time we have. On the other hand, some of us just skim the surface of it while we're here. And here's this wonderful moment we're in right now Challenging, yes. We're not going to pretend it's not, but still potent with possibility. So difficulty is inevitable. It's part of the human experience. The difficulty itself, you don't gain all the gifts and you don't have to dig inside yourself and do the, the first few reps. Don't give you that. It's when you, it's challenging that we find things. If we're, if we're open to it, if we're willing to try some experimentation, that we will find things in ourselves that not only will help us navigate during this time, but will be with us as capacities for the rest of our lives. How we navigate is essential to who we become and where we end up by means of this time. Dare the dark. Tune to your mindset. I have a power in me, a power with me, that not only will get me through it, but I'll be better off because of it. And number three, I am not going to go through a difficult time and not gain the gifts that are offered inside this difficult time. I'm going to find the seeds of good, find the seeds of possibility here. 
and I'm at least acknowledging them today. I'm going to write down three to five possible goods by means of my going through this difficult time. 